Yeah, and you know, we've seen it in so many different areas. I believe this is Storm Command, Michael Armstrong. And look wow. at this picture. I mean, you see the roof mm -hmm. that is uh, blown off part of this home. And is that an RV? It looks like a, an, an RV on the yeah. side there. Now, can we speak to Michael? Yeah. Is he is he available? Yeah, I'm here. Uh, Michael, can you kind of describe for us what you're seeing in person there? Yeah, this is along Bryant, uh, Bryant Road, actually, and just north of Moxon Trail. And you can see uh, there's a person actually starting to back out right here. There's there's damage to their roof right up there as the night vision kind of adjusts on the contrast. You can see it's taken off uh, quite a bit of their roof here on one side of their home. It's a really nice home out here. And, yeah, they had that. Um, that travel trailer right there that also sustained a lot of damage. There's a lot of people just kind of out here surveying. There's not any power, so there's not a whole lot of light. You can see a lot of people kind of walking around. I'm going to pan up to the next house. Uh, some of these ha homes are actually pretty new that were, have been built out here. Um, and there's just kind of a lot of debris and stuff scattered across the yard uh, as the tornado tore through this area. Again, we are south of Meeker and northwest of Johnson and I'm going to come back behind me and you'll you, you can definitely see in the tree damage that this is exactly where the tornado path took right now as I take my 360 camera and continue to pan around um, so one thing I have not heard yet is if there are any injuries it doesn't look like it we haven't seen any like emergency vehicles um, no ambulances or anything like that but nonetheless some pretty substantial damage out here and we're just kind of working our way down there's still more damage further south from where i'm even at right now and um so yeah this it's been a it's been a long day long night we this is kind of honestly this is what we expected sadly we we, we hate that that we have to go through all this damage um but but that's oklahoma right then we're getting right ahead into springtime and and we're just we're just getting started so um, hate hate that folks are having to clean up, but um, we just are hoping that uh, there aren't a whole lot of injuries with it because uh, that's the one thing we can't replace people. We can replace stuff, we just can't replace people. Exactly, Michael. And yeah, you just hope and pray that there are no injuries from this. Now you've been tracking the storms from the very beginning, and along the way, I, I know you've seen damage as you've been um, following the storms as they move from southwest Oklahoma into the Oklahoma City metro and beyond. What are some of the other scenes that you've seen along the way? Well, we saw the damage that was near, uh, I would say the first, you know, first thing that jumps at me about that as far as the damage that I saw was when we were there at um, kind of right by the uh, Council Road, I-40 area, uh, right near the outlet mall. We had a, a tractor trailer that had been flipped over on its side in the median, and we had seen the power flashes, and that was certainly really concerning when we saw the tornado, you know, hitting and all, all of the strong winds that were moving across the west side of the metro. And then, you know, it, it, you just know that when you when you look at radar, I, I'm just – it's so hard because you, you see these debris signatures and you know there's a tornado there and we have to keep going because we have to keep trying to warn. It's kind of like that idea of, Lord, please let me get one more. You know, it's kind of that's what we're trying to do. We're trying to stay up with the storm and keep people advised on exactly where they are. And so that, that to me is kind of one of the hard parts. It's just I, there's no way to even know at this point how many tornadoes have really touched down in the state tonight. But I uh, just to show it's it, we've had a lot of straight line wind damage, but we've had a lot of these small but intense tornadoes that have moved through as well. Michael, I, I do want to bring up something I think that you all um, shared with our viewers that, you know, no matter if it's a tornado, these strong winds can also do a ton of damage. That's right. Yeah. And sometimes really, if you think about it from that standpoint, a lot of times I talk to people and they're like, oh, it must have been a tornado. And I, I, I do sympathize with that because I think it'll, in some kind of a weird way, it almost feels like a kind of a badge of courage if you get hit by a tornado rather than straight line winds for some reason. But the, the reality is, is that wind is wind, whether it's spinning or whether it's going straight. If it starts to do damage like that to a roof, you know, really, at that point, it doesn't really matter whether it's a tornado or not. It just matters that it's doing damage 
and costing people that property and potentially injuries. And, you know, we, what, the last thing we want to see is anyone killed. But, I mean, it, it really doesn't, in a sense, matter whether the wind is twisting or whether it's straight line if it's doing significant damage. That's just one of the most important messages going forward as we head into, yeah. uh, you know, severe weather. And Michael, as we, I don't know if we still have him real quick. I was just going to ask Michael, as he tracked that storm there in not far from the Shawnee area, do you remember about how strong those winds were? Uh, no, I don't. But I mean, right here, I'm going to tell you, I mean, that's, that's going to be right there. You're going to have EF0, maybe some EF1 damage potentially in this area. Um, because we have seen, we've heard that there's a barn that's completely destroyed. Uh, Kyle has been out um, shooting some video on his camera of this scene, and then we're going to move on down the road and find another scene where I suspect we're just kind of playing connect the dots right now because the tornado was on a track through this area for several miles. So we're going to go through and find some of the air, other areas. But my guess is that the winds were still, we're in that, you know, 80, 90, even perhaps up to 110 mile per hour winds with this area. And that's exactly what we were talking about is that we could see wind and swell in excess of 100 miles per hour. Now, that's doesn't matter whether it was with a tornado or whether it wasn't. But in this particular case, this was a tornado.